Hello everybody and welcome to our revision session to help parents um, understand how they can best help their students to prepare and revise for their GCSE exams. Uh, the presentation is being given by myself, Elaine Warriner, and my colleague, Claire Eleanor, and many of you who will, um, know us will know that we are also parents ourselves of similarly aged teenage children, so we understand the trials and tribulations of trying to get our young people to take that responsibility for um, work, and you can see a recent picture of us on the screen there so that you're able to visualize us of course we don't we're not quite that old are we okay so revision strategies um, and i'm going to first about how we encourage young people to revise in the first place and i'm not advocating a violent approach at all but that does slightly remind me of my own mother okay so Start by discussing with your child why it's important rather than making it a nag, nag, nag in a negative sense. It's important to try and have that conversation. And they often say, don't they, perhaps sometimes these conversations are easier when you're in the car or when you're walking along, you're doing something else. And just start that conversation um, about the importance of studying, even when your teacher has not specifically told you to do something as a key stage four or a GCSE student. It's good to get into studious habits and be doing these kind of things regularly. National expectations are that students are working at least two hours a day beyond the end of the school day and our young people of course finish school at three o'clock in the afternoon so they should have time to do a little bit of study each day and still leave time for those other important things their hobbies or socialising whatever else it is that they need to do. Remember that GCSE examinations to a certain extent are unfortunately a national competition. The grade boundaries change every year. So when the exam is particularly hard and the overall attainment across the country is lower, then those grade boundaries go down. If everybody finds the exam easy, then those grade boundaries go up, of course. So what you need to do is make sure that you're doing proportionally better than uh, you know your other students um, across the country. So it's about giving yourself that head start if you possibly can. And then talk to them about why good GCSE grades are important. The better the GCSE grades, the more opportunities they're going to have going forward, a choice um, of avenues and pathways that suddenly open up to them at 16. And this quotation is from super head teacher John Tomzer, who said, uh, the best pastoral care for kids is to send them off with a really good set of exam results. And I, for one, totally agree with that that's what we're here for we're here to get them through and for them to get the best out of us that they possibly can and in order to do that they do need to do some independent study so practical strategies a timetable is a really good idea if um they're anything like my eldest you kind of need to sit with them and do that i know some other students will be much more independent and be realistic there's no point in saying they're going to do three subjects a night and they're going to do an hour per subject a night they're not going to do that so be realistic make sure that it doesn't look too frightening or off-putting to your young person and it may be that you need to start small and say okay we're going to do two subjects a night we're going to do 15 minutes per subject set a timer on your phone when the timer goes off move on and do the second one it's better than nothing and as they get into that habit hopefully then you can extend it you can maybe say look you know as we move through the year we're going to 20 minutes 25 minutes and so on encourage them so you've got the carrot or the stick haven't you so you know if you do 30 minutes of study tonight then I'll let you do x y and z and you know your child so you know what it is that will particularly motivate them or you can use the stick I've stolen the lead of the PlayStation I've hit it and you are not having it back until you've done and I'm you know as a parent I've done both of those things um, I'm probably I probably lean more towards the stick if I'm honest which is probably not a good reflection of me as a parent but hey you do what you need to do show an interest in what they've done so you know go up and they're, you know they're probably not going to bring their revision notes down to show you if you can pop up there after half an hour give them lots of praise oh well done i know you didn't feel like it today but look you've worked your way through that topic those notes are great and encourage them to keep their notes organized as well so that they can go back to them 
And finally, do be prepared. As a parent, you've got to be ha having the difficult conversations. Um, if your young person is particularly reluctant, then it may be that having tried, um, you know, the encouragement and the praise and the rewards, you've perhaps got to, you know, go a little bit Mr. Nasty Guy in order to, to get it, you know, to get them to do it. So don't be afraid to hold them to account if they are not doing any studying because they really, really need to be doing it. And there's your to do list. So have a timetable, hide the games console, the tablet, the phone, whatever it is that distracts them. Have rewards and praise readily available, you know, make them a drink, just be nice to them. And that last one, be prepared to hold the line. Occasionally, you know, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but they need to do it. It's for their own good. OK, I'm going to hand over to my colleague now to take you through the rest of the presentation. Hi, I'm Claire Eleanor and I'm going to tell you how to actually revise um, with your child the techniques that we use in school, the techniques that we try to teach the children in school and things that you can be doing at home. So firstly, a really um, basic and simple way to start is to use the knowledge organisers. Now, these are available for some subjects, Key Stage 4 GCSE knowledge organisers on the Australia Sintivo website. Um, and they're basically summaries of various modules of GCSE courses. So there's a link below and I've done a screenshot that's going to come up on the next page of this PowerPoint of the um, history, early Elizabethan England, Queen Church and Government Knowledge Organiser, which is one unit of one module of the GCSE course. So the knowledge organisers are almost bite sized chunks of the history and you can do this in any other subject. They're bite sized pieces of the, the GCSE that they can try and learn, try and memorise. So there's the link. And what you need to do to start the revision off is just ask your child to read this carefully and try and remember the key words, um, the key people in history, the events, uh, any timelines. So get them to read it um, and then you can test them on it. So you can see the screenshot there of the Australia Sintivo website and you can see history there 789 and you can also see um, key stage 4. Anything that's in pink you can click on and it will take you to the knowledge organiser. So you don't even have to print these off. You can print them off if, if your child wants to highlight them on a printed copy that's absolutely fine. We print them off in school sometimes and hand them out. We've got printed copies, but you can look at them on a laptop, on a computer um, and just click on there and, and even you just do it electronically. No, no need to print it off. OK, so there's an example of the one I mentioned earlier. That is early Elizabethan England, topic one, Queen Church and Government. And you can see a really handy summary about Elizabeth when she became queen in 1558. You can see the key vocab there. Um, you can see a timeline. And if I go on to the next page, you can then see um, some information on the religious settlement of 1559, which is a really important part of that topic. They have to know about that at History GCSE. And there's also a list of key people. We then have um, codes to get onto the Schoology site. We have BBC Bite Size links and all sorts of further resources that you can move on from that knowledge organiser um, for your child to look at. So when you've done the knowledge organiser, when they've had a look at the knowledge organiser, you can then test them. Now, as I've said, you can do a short test or a quiz. You can sit with your child and you can ask them the questions. You can name the people, uh, name the key word and get them to tell you what it means. You can, you can do it like that. Or you can have a look on BBC Bite Size. There's a key stage four section. Again, there is the link. Um, and that will take you to the subject page. And from the subject page, you can choose the GCSE that you're currently revising and you can choose specific exam boards as well. And they tend to be uh, 10 question quizzes um, and they really are in line with what we're teaching here. There are other revision websites as well. There's one we use in history called Quizlet, but BBC Bite Size has all the subjects on it. And you can see there a screenshot of um, a BBC Bite Size Key Stage 4 
um, religious settlement, Edexcel, which is the exam board we use, you can just see the first two questions there. So on her accession to the throne, who did Elizabeth have to take control of the church from? Your year 10 historian should know the answer is the Pope. And question two, which law made Elizabeth supreme governor of the Church of England? Again, it was the act of supremacy. So you get 10 questions like that, then you'll see, you know, what they know or you know what they don't know perhaps but then you can put that right okay mind maps are another good way to um, revise topics so when you want to delve deeper into the topic it's a good idea to start rewriting the information so once your child is secure with the knowledge when they've used the knowledge organizer when they've done some quizzes they can start to rewrite their notes so you could take a, a particular topic or a module of one of the GCSEs and produce a mind map with several branches of information. For history as well, obviously, myself and Mrs. Warriner, we are history teachers. Timelines are useful, so your child could also write out key information in chronological order. And writing out key points again is actually proven to help learning occur. Now you've got a mind map there on how to do a mind map and the thing about mind maps is uh, each branch can be a different aspect of the topic you can use different colors you can have sub branches you can put keywords on it and i think the next page gives you an example of a geography mind map the topic of global warming there and you can see the red branch coming off causes the green branch coming off solutions really colorful lots of information lots of stats on there so that's a good way to get the information written out another way to revise is to use flashcards again we teach them how to do this in class and this is something you can easily do at home so the idea with the flashcard is it's very simple you get your child to write a question on one side and then the answer on the other and then the fun part about this is you then get to test them so there's all these strategies there's all these techniques where you're trying to get them to, to, to secure their knowledge okay um, the next thing that you can do is when you have secured the knowledge when when the knowledge is secure you can do practice exam questions and we've got some exam questions from the Elizabeth module of the history course here. We've got described two features of Elizabeth's religious settlement, explain their work, why there was a Puritan opposition, why, sorry, why there was Puritan opposition to Elizabeth's religious settlement, and Elizabeth successfully so solved her problems of 1558, how far do you agree? And that particular question, which is worth 16 marks, you get a couple of sort of bullet points to, 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 to prompt your knowledge so they, they are taught how to do these questions in class and following some revision they can then attempt practice questions which will be marked by teachers uh, and they don't have to wait for a homework to be set to do practice questions um, we will mark anything they put in front of us if they want to do a practice question we will always mark that so that takes us to the end of our presentation. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you'll be able to encourage your young person to undertake some exam practice and to also do use those revision techniques or any other techniques. But once they've got started, I think it feels like less of a mountain to climb. So we just want to um, pass on our thanks for listening. Wish you all good luck. And um, who doesn't want to finish a presentation with the Hoff? Um, you know, certainly it's a, it's a, it's a key key thing for me so yeah and as i've put on there please don't hesitate to ask your class teacher or the subject head of department all those email addresses are on the academy website so if you've got work that you want marking or you need any further advice or encouragement please do get in touch with us thanks a lot good luck everybody cheerio